Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you everything you need to cook with in your Instant Pot. So my name is Kristen and I am sister number two from SixSistersStuff.com. Now this video is sponsored by Unique Impressions. I'm usually really picky about my Instant Pot sponsors because they have to be really good items that you guys will actually want. So I'm so excited to share with you the Unique Impressions Pressure Cooker Complete Accessory Set. This comes with so many different things. So I'm gonna kind of just go through and share with you everything that comes with it. Now if you go down below in the description, I have a link for you that will give you a discount code and the place where you can find this accessory kit. All right, you guys, I'm gonna show you how to make some amazing recipes out of these items. Now the first one is a steamer basket. This one is a little bit different. It's not made with the wire, it's made with the metal. Next is a spring form pan. You can make so many different things with this. Next is the silicone egg bite mold, and I'm gonna show you what I make in it. Next is a silicone heat resistant pad that's perfect for a spring form pan or just your Instant Pot pot. I love these little oven mitts that come with it because they're the perfect size they can fit in your Instant Pot to pull things out. Also comes with an egg slicer, another little trivet that you can put eggs on or other things on. And this thing is my most favorite. It's called the dish plate clamp and it literally will clamp to everything. It, whether it's round or kind of odd shaped, it will pick up heavy things and you can put them right into your Instant Pot or pull them right out of your Instant Pot. I had a lot of fun with this one. I love that you can find all of these things in just one kit so you don't have to buy a lot of separate things. So now I'm gonna show you what you can make in these items. The first one is chocolate cake. And I'm gonna be using the spring form pan for this one. All right, so I'm gonna take a normal box chocolate cake and just dump it in a bowl. You're gonna follow the directions on the back of your cake mix. So this one has one and a fourth cup water, three eggs, and a half cup of oil. Now if your directions don't match mine on your cakes mix, it will be just fine. Just follow the directions on your cake mix. Now you're gonna go ahead and spray your spring form pan with some cooking spray so your cake won't stick. Then pour your batter right into it. Now you wanna leave about a half an inch at the top because it will bake up a little bit. Next, cover your cake with foil. Now this is an important part because you don't want a soggy cake. So I'm gonna do two layers of foil. As you put on your foil, make sure you seal it the best that you can. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. Next, you're gonna take your Instant Pot and put in your little trivet. This one is the new egg one that I got from this accessory kit, and you're gonna add one cup of water. Next, I'm gonna take my favorite new item for my Instant Pot is that little clamp and just put my cake right inside my Instant Pot. Gonna close your lid, make sure the knob is on sealing, always. And now you can do pressure cook, or if you have a manual button, it's the same thing. And you're gonna go all the way up to 45 minutes. About seven seconds after you push that, your machine's gonna say on. That's a good thing. It's gonna start pressurizing and then we'll start counting down. All right, so I let it sit in there for about four minutes and then I did the knob to venting to let it do a quick release. Once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and take the lid off of your Instant Pot and your cake should be all the way done. I'm gonna take my new favorite clamp and pull it right out of the Instant Pot. Now they have these little oven mitts that come with it too that will fit perfectly, but I love that little clamp. So go ahead and take the foil off of your cake very carefully. It's gonna be a little bit hot, but you're gonna want your cake hot for this next part. Now it's okay if your foil sticks to the top a little bit. You could spray it with Pam so it won't stick, but this is the bottom of our cake, so it really doesn't matter that much. All right, so now I'm poking holes in my cake. Now this cake is really thick. I should have done a knife and gone all the way to the bottom, but because I'm using a fork, we're just doing the top today. Now for my favorite part, we are adding a half cup of caramel on top of the cake. Now this is just the caramel that you can find like by the ice cream or the chocolate syrup area. It's that kind of caramel or caramel, whatever you call it. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> now you want to do a generous amount. So I did about a half a cup. You can do more. If you think that's too much, go ahead and do less. But you want to do this while it's hot 
so the caramel will seep down into the cake. Now you can eat it right now with some ice cream, it would be delicious, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I put this in the fridge overnight, I covered it back up, and now I'm just going around the edges so it will pull out pretty quick. Putting a plate on the bottom, flipping it over, and then popping open my springform pan. Now because I sprayed it with non-stick cooking spray, the springform pan comes off so easily. And so does the top, well, the bottom. All right, I like to add toppings on top of my cake. So this is a Snickers bar. You could use Milky Ways, Twix, Reese's peanut butter cups, whatever topping you want. Next, I'm just gonna put it on top. Cool Whip, I know there's Cool Whip haters out there. That's fine, you can use real whipping cream or a frosting even if you want to. So I just put some Cool Whip all over the top, then kind of clean up the edges a little bit, add a little bit more caramel just for a cute drizzle. There's not a lot of flavor with that, but it looks good. Then I'm just gonna add the Snickers that I cut up right on top. So I'm gonna call this my Snickers Poke Cake. Now cooking cake in the Instant Pot makes it so moist and delicious. You're gonna die when you try this, especially when you put the caramel in it, you can see how the caramel's gone down into each bite. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the egg bite mold. This thing is so fun to play with. Now. It is a silicone mold, and you can even cook your eggs in there if you want to. But I'm going to cook them a little different way today. So I'm going to crack an egg in each individual mold. So with this, I'm going to be making these egg muffins, which are so easy to make. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Then you're just going to take a whisk and whisk each individual egg. It's really simple and only takes a few seconds. Next are the toppings. So all my kids like different things. I love mushrooms, so I'm putting a little mushroom chunks in there. I have some who just like cheese, so I put a little bit of Parmesan. I have some ham. You could do peppers, um, tomatoes. You could do all kinds of things. I'm just making mine towards what each individual kid will eat. Now it's time to cook each little individual egg omelet. All right, so I'm gonna put a trivet in and add about one cup of water into the bottom of my Instant Pot. I'm gonna take my clamp, I know, I'm obsessed with it, and put it right into the Instant Pot. Now you're not gonna cover these eggs or anything, you're just gonna leave them just like that. So I'm going to put my lid on and just make sure whatever Instant Pot you have, it's set to sealing, not venting. Okay, so this one has a manual button. Usually where that slow cooker is, that's where your pressure cook button is. Manual and pressure cook are the same thing. So we're going to keep it at nine minutes. After you set the timer, the on will appear. That means it's gonna take time to pressurize, about 10 minutes or so. So when the timer's done, I let them sit in there for about 10 to 15 minutes and then switch the knob to venting and pulled the lid off when I could. And these make the cutest little individual egg omelets without you being over the stove constantly in the morning time. And the egg mold fits perfectly on that little silicone mat. All right, my eggs are done. Now, they come with a little lid, so if you want to cook them and put them in the fridge for later, um, you could eat these multiple mornings, or if you want to serve them, you take them out and cut them up. This one is my mushroom one. I like to serve these with sour cream and salsa. So the next thing I'm gonna use is the steamer basket. Now, I use my steamer basket all the time. I'm gonna put a link in the description for you for the other things that I use my steamer basket for. But for today, I'm gonna to be cooking sweet potatoes. I love using the steamer basket to cook potatoes and other vegetables because they're not sitting there in the water. They're actually up above it, so they're not gonna get soggy. Now you can fill your sweet potatoes all the way to the top if you'd like to, but today I'm just doing, well, two. I had to cut one in half because it was so big, so there's about three normal size sweet potatoes in here. So I added one cup of water, put my steamer basket in, put the lid on, make sure the lid is to sealing. Now you can push pressure cook or the manual button will be right there if you have the Lux. And we're gonna go all the way down to, wait for it, wait for it, 16 minutes. So when it's done cooking, I'm gonna let it sit there for about 15 minutes and then turn my knob to venting. Take your lid off and your potatoes should be all the way done. Now the handle is a little hot so I'm going to use these handy dandy oven mitts and pull my steamer basket right out. Now imagine if my potatoes were just sitting in that liquid, they would be pretty soggy, but because they're in the steamer basket, 
they are going to be perfect. I just want to show you how soft and tender these are. You could just poke a fork through it so easily. Now these potatoes are perfect for mashing. You can make a sweet potato mash or you could cut them up and serve them with chicken and buffalo sauce. There are so many different things you could do with the sweet potatoes. But for me, I just like to put it on the side and add a little bit of brown sugar. All right, you guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye.